Welcome my friend to the third and final lesson of five things that stand in the way of you becoming a great parent. So in this last lesson, we're going to be discussing two main hurdles that parents face and solutions on how to get over these hurdles effectively instead of stumbling over them every single day. Now the hurdle, number four, being a hypocrite and not practicing unconditional love. Now we touched upon the idea of unconditional love and why it was so important in the last lesson. But let's talk about the word hypocrite. It is definitely not a word that any of us would ever consider to be a compliment. But too often, we sometimes can be a hypocrite because we don't practice what we preach. We need to remember that from a really young age, children learn to imitate others. In fact, that's how they learn to behave and care for themselves and develop new skills and communicate with others. From their earliest moments, your kids are watching you closely, like a little hawk in fact, looking for guidance and they ultimately pattern their own behavior and beliefs after what they see. So whether you like it or not, your examples become permanent images which ultimately shape their attitudes and actions for the rest of their life. So the question is, what exactly are you teaching them? If children are great imitators, you need to give them something great to imitate. This is parenting in a nutshell. You need to become the sort of person you want your children to be more like. And more importantly, parent like someone is watching you because someone always is. They really are. Your, your kids watch you for a living. It is their job. It's what they do. And that is why it's so important to try your best to be a good role model. So this is a hurdle that we face if you are behaving in a way that you don't necessarily want them to imitate. You need to know that, you know, if you want your children to learn about respect, then you need to behave respectfully towards others. If you want your children to grow up to become responsible and honest and loving human beings, then you need to be responsible, honest and loving with your own kid. And there's a little point in trying to teach a lesson about respect and loyalty or hard work to your kids if you are yourself rude or lazy or disrespectful to others. I'm not saying that you are, but the point is there that, you know, there's little point in saying, get healthy, be kind, exercise regularly. If two seconds later you are eating a donut or not going to the gym or being mean to, you know, a stranger. In case you are wondering, this behavior definitely falls under the definition of a hypocrite and hypocrites tend not to be the best teacher. So now that you know this, you know, that you don't want to confuse your children because you don't want to, you know, teach them that it's okay to say one thing and to do something completely different a minute later. Being inconsistent in your parenting and failing to practice what you preach, it's just teaching your kids, you know, that they don't always have to stick to their own word or that it's acceptable to make plans and promises and then completely ditch them the next day. Because if, you know, the significant people in their life are doing it, well, why can't they too? The attitude that you have as a parent is what your children will learn you know, from more than what you tell them. They don't always remember what you're trying to teach them, but they remember what you do and remember who you are. So where can we go from here? Let's start by looking at modeling healthy relationships. Now, one of my favorite pieces of advice, and I remember discovering this, I think, back when I was 18, and it said, marry the right person. This one decision will determine 90% of your happiness or misery. So think about now about how that applies to you being a good role model for your kids. Are you modeling healthy relationships at home? Are you honest, respectful, and kind with your partner? And this question applies whether you're together with them or if you've separated no longer with them. What expectations may your child have about relationships in the future as a result of the ones they are witnessing? Practicing what you preach also holds true for relationships that you have with your spouse and parents and other family members and friends that are part of your child's life. It is so important to nurture your relationship with your spouse if you're in a relationship or if you're single to nurture the relationship that you have with yourself. Let your child see that you communicate with others in a positive and healthy manner and show love and affection so that they learn from an early age that what a healthy marriage looks like and relationships look like, whether it's romantic or with your friends and family. You also need to be honest with your kids. I should note that you don't have to be a superwoman to be a good parent. You do not. Don't even bother trying because it's an impossible goal. 
Instead, my goal is to encourage you to just be more conscious of the words you choose and the actions you take in front of your kids because one day you might see your child patterning many of your behaviors. Um, and it might be, you know, hopefully it's great ones that you want to see in them, but if it's something negative, you have to sometimes wonder, is it something that they saw and learnt from home? So this is great when you're behaving well and bad if they're adopting your worst habits. This is definitely not a time to be ignorant, so I've given you some warning. It's definitely a hurdle that most of us have to jump over if we're being rude because we're tired and then we catch our kids being rude and we're like, oh, okay, well, where did they learn that from? It's not always going to be from you, but often it's something just to look at. You know, where can you improve when it comes to practicing behavior that you want to see, um, you know, emulated in your kids? It is not fair to ask of others what you are not willing to do yourself. That was said by Eleanor Roosevelt, and I really, really believe it. It's not fair to ask of others what you are not willing to do yourself. Practicing what you preach doesn't mean that you can't mess up in what, you know once a while or every single day because we are all human and chances are you will. But that is okay. Just own up to the mistakes that you make when you make them and communicate openly and honestly with your kids. Let them know that you're just always trying to do your best. And this is going to help you know your children to build a really strong sense of security and, and high self-esteem because they know that you are doing their best and it's okay for them to make mistakes too because guess what? They're going to sometimes. So just remember this, your beliefs don't make you a better person, your behavior does. Practicing what you preach is such a simple way to help you become a more authentic parent. It really does, you know. So when it comes to being a positive role model, you know, show compassion and understanding, stay positive and in control of your decisions, ask for help when you need it. Think before you speak and don't blame others, you know, learn to take responsibility for your own actions. And the things just to avoid, you know, in order to get over this hurdle and to like set a really good example for your kids is looking at anger, you know, avoiding anger and hatred and intolerance or racism or greed or non-constructive criticism, pettiness and bullying. They're sort of things that we don't really want to see in our kids. And so it's best to like instead, you know, embrace compassion and love and charity, respectful behavior, a thirst for knowledge and a passion in life. When you model the exact behavior that you wish to see in your kids, not just through your words, but in your actions, it just makes it a little bit easy to guide your kids in the right direction. It doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be perfect little children who never do anything wrong, but it just means that you know at least that you've planted the right seeds and hopefully you will reap the rewards later. So now that we've tackled that hurdle, which is all about making sure that we practice what we preach because it's a hurdle that some of us need to jump over and we stumble across it every day. Let's have a look at the last hurdle and this is a big one. It's all about letting go of other people's judgments. So I want to ask you a question. Do other people's judgments occasionally get in the way of your parenting? Now I know it's, you know, it's normal to worry a little bit about what other people think about our kids you know, we do hope that our kids present themselves in a manner that's kind and respectful to others. Um, and when they don't, we sometimes worry that this reflects badly, you know, back on us. But one of the thing, you know, the most important things that we can do as a parent is learn to separate our expectations, the ones that we have, you know, from that of other people. So let's just say, you know, when you get stressed about your kid, you know, what your child possibly is, if they've put together an outfit that is truly atrocious, like we both know it is, but they seriously love it, what bothers you the most? You know, are you worried about what other people will think or does, does it actually bother you that they, you know, have put a few colors that don't go together together? Is that really such a problem or is it just, you know, other people's judgments? Or when you have a child that is loud, do you embrace their, you know, feistiness and loudness or do you fear the judgment of others who might interpret that behavior as being, you know, out of control or conceited? Or let's just say your kid is acting inappropriately because they sometimes do. You know, does it make a difference when you're alone versus when they're, you know, when you have an audience of critical eyes? So you might find that if you're at home and your child misbehaved, you wouldn't even get stressed and you wouldn't worry because you know they're just tired, you put them to bed, it's all said and done. But if it happens in front of an audience, you know, you suddenly have a different feeling inside, like it's stressing you out. That's the thing that we're really going to try to nip in the bud. When we worry about other people's judgments, it only adds to our stress 
you know, the stress of parenting when it doesn't. It's an unnecessary stress. It really, really is. And this is just the icing of the cake when it comes to mastering the other hurdles, you know, because once we accept and remember that our kids are not mini, mini me's and that we have the freedom to parent in whichever way we choose and we understand the importance of keeping the big picture in mild mind while practicing what we preach, this is the last thing. It is so much easier to let go of other people's opinions when you realize that they aren't the important ones in the grand scheme of things. It's you that's important and your children, um, children's well-being that's important. But other people, all I can say is ignore the haters and the critics who think they know what is best for your child. So what do you do if you're ever in a position where other people might be judging your child or you for your parenting style? I want you to know, number one, do not take it personally. It is never about you. It's about them. So you need to make a parenting choice that feels right for you and your child always. Let other people worry about themselves. You have your own family to focus on, so take a deep breath and move on. This needs to be a conscious decision. Next, accept the criticism without being offended. This is a tough one and it requires that you have thick skin. Is this something that you could potentially learn from whatever they were telling you that you didn't really want to hear? Sure. Yes. If it's great, perfect, you know, learn from it. If not, just ignore it. You know, criticism is often information that you can use to help you grow. But if you um, don't, if it's really unnecessary and not called for, let it go. I also think it's important that if you have an issue with other people being judgmental, try not to judge other people's parenting skills either. It's such an important thing to give, just as you would give yourself grace, to give other people grace. Because no one's perfect, no one has it easy, everyone has their own issues, and you never know what people are going through. So just pause before you start judging or mocking or criticizing others. We are all fighting our own unique war. It really is so much more important and valuable to look for strength in others, because we don't gain anything from criticizing other people's imperfections. We really, really, really don't. And the final Tip is just, you know, stop letting people who do so little for you control so much of your mind, feeling and emotions. Other people's opinions of you and your kids do not matter. When you realize this, that they have no control over your life, that is the key to freedom. It really, really is. So if you ever face, you know, criticism, just acknowledge those feelings, address your discomfort. It's normal to feel hurting offended you know if someone is picking on you and your child but let it go because their opinions honestly do not matter in the long term really 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 just look at who you and your family spend your most time with is it with those who criticize you or is it with those who encourage and lift you higher I really encourage you to you know surround yourself with people who believe in you and your kids who think that you're wonderful your life is too important for anything less So in the end, you will be truly, truly free when other people's thoughts and opinions about your parenting are just irrelevant. They're too irrelevant to even, you know, enter your mind. You do not have the energy to focus on that. You need to work on what's best for you and your family. So just always trust your intuition, follow your heart. What's most important in the end is that your child feels loved and accepted and supported and nurtured by you. They're not fussed about other people. Don't you be fussed about other people. In the end, it's your belief in your kids and unconditional love that will matter the most. So in our quest to become a better parent, we really do need to jump over these five hurdles that I've spoken about in the last few lessons so that we can parent from a better, you know, better place and a healthier mindset too. But that is just the beginning. In the next video, we're going to talk more about, you know, how you can become an even better parent intentionally in a short period of time. It's almost going to feel like magic, but the real magic comes from you taking consistent, proactive action. And I have a plan for you that I'm so excited to share with you. I'm going to share it with you in the next lesson. So I will catch you there.